Okay, welcome to this uh, next video. What we're doing today is we're looking at um, projections of the shoulder. Um, some of the textbooks continue to um, advocate the axial projection of the shoulder, which is fairly impossible for those people who've really hurt themselves. Um, and so other alternatives um, are being adopted. Agency radiology um, suggests the uh, anteroposterior projection um, augmented by um, either the apical oblique projection or the scapular y lateral projection. Um, and as they say here, the axial armpit view is not recommended. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do these two um, projections, the apical oblique and the scapular y. So the apical oblique view of the shoulder um, was um, well, the first reference I've got of it is in 1984 um, by Garth. So it's often known as the Garth view or the Garth projection. Um, this um, paper here by Corngath and Salazar um, in 1987 um, gives data to show that um, the AP and the apical oblique found 188 of 190 injuries. Um, in a series, so it was very effective um, projection, um, combination of projections. So um, the description um, is to turn the patient 45 degrees um, towards the affected side and angle 45 degrees um, down quarterly um, with a receptor in the oblique so it's a it's a it's a right right or left posterior oblique um, with a 45 degree caudal angulation so it's not as we say it's not a true axial um, it's a half axial um, because the um, receptor is not in the axial plane so we'll set up and get ready for um, this projection by putting a 2430 receptor um, on the bucky um, and we'll leave our um, x-ray machine um, at a distance until we've got our patient positioned. Now with such a large 45 degree angle <coughs> with tall patients it might be necessary to sit them down so that you can get the height to be able to angle down. Um, so that's something you might need to do in a, in a general room. We don't have that problem in the simulator. Okay, so we'll, we'll pick a patient for a shoulder. We'll pick this female patient for a shoulder. Um, make the selection. So the patient's going to be erect. And the AP half axial oblique Garth projection. So this is the settings that are suggested and it's suggesting using a grid so we'll put the receptor in the grid and use those settings. Okay. Right shoulder. Always having to check myself with these sorts of things. my right marker up here okay we'll get our patient in now so we've done some prep but um, I'll finish off when we've got our patient here so first thing first we need to spin our patient round so towards the affected side 45 degrees position him up against the bucky and then we've got to angle our tube 45 degrees. So it reads 45 from 90. And then we need to bring the tube towards the receptor um, until we've got 100 centimeters. And raise 
the tube up. So I think this is one of the problems with this projection, the fact that you have to be so close to the patient's head. Um, <clears throat> So obviously in the simulator, we can't get the patient to move the head, but in real life, you would um, ask the patient to sort of duck, um, move the head away. And what you need to do is center to um, the coracoid process. Okay, so let's uh, see what we've got here. Okay, so I'm actually centered too high um, and I've got, um, got an acromion process here and I've got a glenoid and coracoid and we can see the head in the glenoid, but we are not seeing um, the rest of the humerus here which I would like to see and I've got all this dead space here so I'm going to move the paint I'm going to move down um, these steep angles are you know really tricky to get right so <clears throat> I think just grazing the top um, and move the, if we just see where by putting in the tube across, you can see that um, you need to have the bucky quite considerably lower than you think um, because of the projection of the rays. Um, so although when, when we get such a steep angle, you'll find that, you know, the, the line on the bucky f that shows the center is is not accurate because the receptor is further back and so therefore when you've got steep angles on you have to center it to the receptor rather than the line on the bucky let's give this another go diagnostic okay now some books have talked about a 30 degree oblique rather than a 45 degree oblique um, let's just have a look at that and see whether that's um, easier to achieve so what we'll do is flatten the patient a little bit more and see what we see what we get How important is that very steep oblique one wonders yep so <clears throat> you can see we're not through the joint space quite so well but um, we've still got quite a nice image And what about a 30 degree angle on the tube instead of 45? Let's try a 30 degree angle on the tube instead of 45. So it's gonna say something like um, 60 degrees from 90, okay. the bucket up a little as well because we've not got such a huge angle okay so that's 
still quite nice, not so extreme, but um, we've still got quite a nice image there. So this is our most extreme image. Um, this is our least extreme image. Um, so I think it can stand a little bit less of an angle and still give you a reasonable result. Um, so if that is something that you're struggling with, when we get to extreme angles and extreme patient angles, you know, we are here irradiating a bit of the patient's face here. Um, so maybe a smaller angle um, might help give a reasonable result um, for when you're struggling with that. Okay, so let's have a look at the um, the scapula Y projection um, as well. So with the scap Y, there's um, some we'll look at um, the near projection has a 15 degree angle down, um, but the standard scap Y is is straight tube. So we'll do both and have a look at the differences. Okay, so spin the patient round. So we're doing the right scapula this time and obviously we'd move the arms of the patient if we weren't doing a simulation so <clears throat> what you need to do is just turn the patient slightly away from um, lateral um, so we're doing an anterior in this case it's a right antero um, oblique right anterior oblique um, and we're looking for the the sort of line of the blade of the scapula and we're trying to get our x-ray beam parallel to that line um, so it needs to be fairly fairly straight um, nearly lateral okay let's drop this down and then what we need to do is move the patient until we've ang angling at we're aiming at the medial border of the scapula Okay, let's see what we get. We need to have the inferior angle um, and the point of the shoulder, the acromion, included. I think that's quite nice. We'll see what we get from that. Now, I'm using a long source image distance here. Um, there are pros and cons. Some people um, will... Um, suggest that a long distance is better, some people think a short distance is better. Um, we can try both. Okay, so um, I'm getting there, but I've, um, I've failed to um, appreciate how much the patient um, is leaning forward, and so I've missed um, the, uh, the scapula off here. So what we need to do is we need to rotate a light beam diaphragm so that it lines up with the scapula. Now I can actually see the scapula there. It's obvious that what I've done there. So I'll raise up the um, beam as well and we'll try that. Okay, pretty unfortunate um, placement of the marker there um, and we're not quite we haven't quite got the blade of the scapula straight um, and we're still missing off this area here so let's uh, correct some of those faults for a start let's put the marker down here where it can do less damage and We need to turn the patient a little bit more this way. Let's see what happens if we do that. Raise the tube again, just so I'm including this. Because this patient's hunching their shoulders up a bit, which you know is quite common for people who've injured themselves. Um, but it does throw you out a little bit. So um, that was um, indeed um, better in terms of getting the um, scapula um, 
blade of scapula um, straight and superimposed on itself, get it in profile. So we have now got the, the scapula more in profile, um, but we're still missing, the, um, I think it's the uh, coracoid. So we'll move the patient back. Okay, so we're missing the, uh, nearly there with the coracoid. Um, so we've got the clavicle here. Um, not too bad, not too bad. Let's do the 15 degree down. Um, well, actually, what we'll do is we'll bring it in, we'll bring the tube in to 100 centimetres. See what effect that has. So <clears throat> by bringing the tube in, we are actually um, getting a little bit, it doesn't really make much difference. I don't think bringing the tube in, it hasn't made an awful lot of difference to the, to the profile or to separation of the scapula from the ribs, perhaps a little bit more, perhaps it is separated a little bit more. Um, but fairly standard, fairly normal. And now we'll try the 15 degree um, angle down, um, which is the near method. Okay, so we've got a 15 degree angle now um, down and we can move this to center. Don't think, we don't really need to move the bucky much for 15 degrees and we'll expose that. So there's the difference between the straight um, scapula Y and the near 15 degree angle down scapula Y. The ribs are much more in profile and it opens up the um, acromion and the, um, so we now see the acromion and the scapula, spine of scapula uh, 